like to put forward a motion. And if I get a second, I'd like to speak to it. Uh, so I move to request the city manager to allow Whoville to remain open for no more than 30 days from today's date to allow the city to allow the manager to return to the council with a set of recommendations for additional rest stops. Second. Move to second. Go ahead. Thanks. So this is not the motion I had originally planned to put forward today, but after discussions with the city manager and others, I decided that this was a, a better way to go for now. Um, as I stated at our meeting on Monday, I think this, this city manager and this council has been flexible and generous in our attempt to respond to advocates and the need of our homeless residents. I would prefer to have a formal rest stop now as an alternative to Whoville, but I also want to be flexible and work with the city manager towards that goal and not rush to set up something else that ends up causing more problems for the city in the long run. Uh, we have received many passionate pleas from community members asking us to wait on closing Whoville until there were other places for people living there to go. I share the concern of some that Whoville is an unsanctioned illegal camp and that tolerating it is not good policy. But if we disband it now, we will still have many people going back to illegal camping in our parks and open spaces, loitering downtown and impacting businesses there, and that doesn't seem like a good policy choice either. We don't have any good options right now, and I feel like we're between the proverbial rock and the hard place. Um, uh, but I'm also not in support of lifting the camping ban at the Whoville site, because that would invite more people to come there, and I think the site already has too many people on it, and that contributes to the negative impact on the surrounding businesses. So I view this motion as an awkward compromise, asking the city manager to forestall closing the site, allow those there now to remain and provide time for the city manager to work with advocates to find alternative rest stops or other places for those currently at Google. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, Councilor Clark in the queue. Thank you. <clears throat> I agree with Claire that um, finding the appropriate response to folks, to the homeless population in Eugene, a lot of folks are having difficulty is is something we should move carefully with, is something that we've tried hard to be compassionate with. Um, but I, I have a problem with the form of the motion of wording. The reason is this. <clears throat> it's, it's very contradictory for me. First of all, it's what, what the folks there are doing right now is illegal camping. And it was self-named Whoville. I don't know that the city did that. And that may be a minor point, but I think it's, it's an important one as we move forward. Because rather than say, um, the motion should, in my opinion, say we will continue not to enforce a ban on illegal camping at the illegal campgrounds at Hilliard and uh, Broadway, because that's an accurate description of what's happening. Now, I think it was politically wise for folks camping there to call it Whoville, but I wonder what the next one would be called, because once you name it, then you have a discussion about closing it or not. And what we're talking about won't fix the problem. There are thousands of others who are in a similar situation. We've talked about that. And the reason I don't agree with this approach is because we're not fixing the problem and we're leaving ourselves open to having it continue on and on and on and on. Because while we maybe uh, work diligently to address the needs of these particular folks, they'll be more. And so they, if they illegally <coughs> came up at a different location, and name it, and we don't enforce the ban there for a while, will we be in the same situation again for a new group of folks over and over and over and over again? And then I, it begs the question for me, we've talked about the rest stop idea as a pilot program. We've, we've already kind of, it sounds to me like we're not having a discussion about whether there should be a third one. It seems like a foregone conclusion in this motion. And how many will we have? And will we have a discussion about how many we should have or shouldn't have? Or is it a foregone conclusion that once the next illegal camp forms, we'll try and find a more appropriate place for them? I, I think we should be addressing this entirely differently. We should be addressing this effectively rather than on an ad hoc basis like we are. So I, I can't support the motion despite the fact that I'd like to actually address the problem for the people that face it. Compromise, it wouldn't be my ideal, but I think it is. Um, trying to make the best of a difficult situation. Um, I recognize that 
solutions that don't involve the participation of both parties are not the ideal solution. Um, that when you have something that's a result of unilateral action that both sides did not agree to, um, that creates difficulty. Uh, and so what I would like to get to is a situation that really is a reflection of us working together, not us having to play catch up to something else that's done. With that said, there is a problem. And just closing the camp, even though it is illegal and it was done unilaterally, still will not move us toward that solution. So for me, who will, will close? The question is not whether or not it will close. I, it will close. It has to close. It was, a, it was a unilateral action on a piece of property that we did not designate. It doesn't reflect partnership. Um, and, and we can't let it stand for that reason. But you don't remove people without having a viable next step in place. And I'm, I'm very thoughtful about that. So I don't think it says that we are foregone to create additional sites, although I think there are some additional sites just because of the scope of the problem that are needed. But I'm not making assumptions about the what next piece. Um, and so providing 30 days for us to get to a, you, you know, a working together what next, I, I think is probably a much, a much better solution. Um, we're not saying it's going to be here or that it's going to be this or, or us taking unilateral, unilateral action either. I see the 30 days as an opportunity for us to figure out how we're going to work together to get to the next step. Um, but for me, Whoville does not reflect the partnership between the city and the homeless advocates. Whoville was just set up. We need to re react to that and do it in a thoughtful, deliberate, responsive way. And I think this may be that awkward way to get there. Um, my I will support this motion. It's not my ideal motion. My ideal motion would be to allow the 15 or 20 people that will be left over when the, the, the balance is moved to to curbside to allow them to move to Eighth and Mill. I already have a site picked out. I think it'd be really good. There's no nearby businesses to be in conflicts with. It's not on. The main transportation route between downtown and the university won't be an eyesore for anybody. Actually, I'd, I'd be in favor of letting them stay where they are, the balance where they are, because, um, you know, with the deputy, the deputy border around it, um, kind of like RCB2 up in Portland, it's not, it's not an eyesore, and it's right on one of Portland's main streets, right at the Chinatown Gate, and um, they, they cost absolutely no problems at all for that. Um, that would be my ideal. I don't know if there's enough support for that. So I, I will support the motion. Um, you know, the, we're, we're just, we're still playing, we're in a position of playing catch up, you know. There's, there's, there's hundreds of illegal campers right now scattered all around the bridges, down by the river, out, you know, all over town, on the borders, on the bridge, in the county, without sanitary facilities or trash pickup. And Google has worked well. It's worked well. That, um, there's been tremendous community support. The community provided the sanitary facilities, not the city. With, with very little, almost no expense to the city whatsoever. Um, pretty much self-governing. Uh, people from the various social agencies have been visiting people, helping them get some some benefits. That in some cases, people didn't even know they were eligible for. Um, so, um, I don't know this, you know, we all realize that, that we're just kind of applying Band-Aids to the, the immense problem, but you know, a Band-Aid, if you're hurting, hey, a Band-Aid's a pretty good, good way to go. That's a good start. It's an incremental approach. And, and you know, it's, is, it, is it ideal? No. What would be ideal? $100 million grant from God right now. <laughs> So we could probably really attack this problem the way that it should be attacked. But that's not in the offing. So I, I think what we're doing is, is, the, is the right thing to do. It's the humane thing to do, compassionate thing to do. It's also actually the economical thing to do. Because with virtually no expense to the city, um, we can make a little dent in the problem. If we don't do this, people will join the hundreds and hundreds 
who, who are causing financial problems to the city and town. And so I think this is the right way to go. In 30 days, we should be able to figure out whether they can stay on that side and up in the other side. Um, would you like another round? No. Uh, you know, we set in motion a pilot program that's going to fight two uh, rest stops. I'm okay with altering the pilot program's time period because we have had <coughs> somebody to get the second uh, rest stop up and running. But during our conversations, I'm hearing now where it's morphing into three and even four rest stops and extending the uh, pilot program period up to as much as a year. I think we've gotten far off our track of where we're going, and I think we need to return back to that and stick with the original idea and let's make sure that this is working, because obviously it's not a Broadway and Hilliard. Despite what we hear at our meeting, this is not an acceptable thing citywide. There's not the citywide support that some people in our community want you to believe. And trust me, we hear from those people, especially the business owners that are immediately impacted by what's going on around Broadway and Hilliard. Uh, I don't care if you give us 30 days or a hundred days or a year. At the end of that <coughs> period of time, we're going to be having the same conversation. And no matter what we do, and why we're going alone is beyond me, but no matter what we do, it's not going to be enough for them. They're going to start demanding more and more, and we're just not in any position to do that. We cannot take this problem on by ourselves. And why it's being dumped in our laps, I have no idea. But it's time that we say, it's, you know, we're going to start enforcing the rules and the regulations that society has set forth. And if you can't get along with it, you're going to have to, uh, you know, get along with the, 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 you know, the consequences. I just think we've, we've danced around this issue enough. If we can't, we can't solve this problem. And no matter, and no matter what we do, we're not going to. And by extending the, the uh, period of time on the rest stops that we do have, if we go too far along, it's going to get into the nice weather. And I, I don't know who said it Monday night, but we'll get the travelers moving in, and then we're going to have that many more people to deal with. So what are we going to do then? Establish more and more and more, and the more that come in, the more rest stops we establish? I can't support this. I'm sorry. Solution, it's, uh, it is a Band-Aid temporary solution. We have 1,700 to 2,000 homeless people in the area. We're accommodating 60 to 90. Uh, so the solutions are preventing homelessness, creating shelter, <laughs> microhousing through codes, so we can have $2,500 homes, uh, opportunity village type thing, uh, and, and regional cooperation with our, our government <coughs> partners locally, but also at the state level. Uh, and, and it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I've been working on this for 25 years, uh, it's, and it's going to move a little bit, but it, has, it takes a long time. And I know people are anxious about having this solved, but it's, it, it's just, it's a very, very difficult problem to solve. Uh, having said all that, it's, it's, uh, it's not okay for me to say, you can't camp there, uh, you can't camp there and, and not tell them where they can camp. So uh, uh, to do that, we need to open another site. That's why I like, like the, uh, the motion. The whole point of the Opportunity Village and the rest stop pilots is to create those rules, uh, the supervision, the 15 people limit, the garbage in the toilets, and get all that working so that we can learn how this works to see if, if, if how this could maybe uh, uh, create more of a permanent solution. Um, but having said all that, this is an illegal camping site. It has become a political football. Uh, it's detrimentally impacting the businesses are around that site, the Mexican restaurant, across the street in particular, and it needs to close. I agree with Mike's suggested language. Uh, it's more accurate, but it's uh, maybe just semantics, but I think it's more accurate. Um, I, I like the certainty of the 30 days. Uh, it's realistic, it's reasonable amount of time, uh, and it could happen sooner, sooner the way the motion is, is, is laid out. It creates a deadline. Deadlines are good. They make the world work. They make things happen. Uh, it keeps everybody's feet to the fire, not to drag this out and have us move along to this new plan B, and, and it won't allow people to delay the process. So um, I, I'm in favor of the motion. I don't particularly like the 8th and Mill site, and I hope the city manager will bring back other alternatives when we bring this back to the council. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
and you know some of the concerns in, in terms of concern that this is assuming there'll be multiple rest stops set up. Actually, we're very limited in the sites that we uh, would approve rest stops if we're just limiting it to city property. So um, that does limit how many rest stops we would set up under our current uh, situation that we've created. Um, I would be willing to modify the motion to read, um, I move to request the city manager to allow those occupying the Broadway and Hilliard site to remain there for no more than 30 days from today to allow the manager to return to the council with a recommendation for additional rest stops or other alternatives for those currently residing there. And if the second of my motion accepts that change. Sure. Okay. The chair is amended and approved and accepted by the second. That, that's all I need. Okay. Uh, next in the queue is Councilor Clark. Thank you. With the exception of that last part, I would have been able to vote for that, where you say, hey, with the exception of the very last part where you say, or the creation of an additional camp. I, I think we need to be clear. I didn't say that. Could you read the last phrase again? I, oh, well, I, so the, just as my original motion said, a recommendation for additional rest stops or other alternatives for those currently residing there. We should not create additional rest stops. We should not create additional camps. This is not an appropriate way to deal with this issue. And it's, it's interesting to me, I, I just have a different perspective on this. When I hear my colleagues, from my respect, say that this is a compassionate response, I, I couldn't disagree more. I don't believe it's compassionate to say it's okay to camp outside in a tent in the freezing cold. And I understand Councillor Zelenka is saying you can't say don't camp here if you don't say where you can camp. Well. It's interesting to me when you say that because this council has on several occasions made it very clear in no uncertain terms that it's very comfortable telling people how it is appropriate to live and how it is not. We passed a bag ban and we passed a necessary five cent fee and the conversation was very specific and I asked very specific questions. I'm not comfortable telling people how to live in that way. And many people at the table said, I think it's appropriate to tell people how it is appropriate to live. Now, I'm asking, is it appropriate here to say it's, it's not okay to live that way or not? Because I don't believe it's a compassionate response to say, yeah, it's cool to camp outside in the cold in the tent. Should we be doing more and things that are more effective to respond to it for public policy? Yeah, absolutely we should. But we should be doing it in a different way. Greg's right, it's where I got the idea when I mentioned it the other night. George is right, I believe, that this is a much larger problem than we have the resources to address. And we should, that's the first and foremost thing we should do, is be working with the county and not human services per se, but with the commissioners and saying, how do we address this on a larger scale? And I can't support the idea or the motion because while the language is in there that the city may continue down this road, of creating additional camps. I just think it's not a compassionate or appropriate response. We have to really keep our eye on both the short and the long game. And, and I agree, a lot of the conversation is what's the long game here. And we have not really had, I think, a substantial conversation about the long game um, in terms of how the different pieces connect together. But even with that said, there is still an immediate short-term need. And we can't kind of ignore the short-term need as we work on a long-term game, we have to be able to kind of do both at the same time. So I'm not looking to try to solve the homeless problem by creating a large number of rest camps. I, I agree, that's not really the ultimate solution. But I do think in the short term, the number that we have now as a pilot is probably insufficient to serve the immediate need. But I'm not interested in creating permanent long-term rest camps. I, I, that's really not the long-term solution. So I'm having to kind of juggle in both worlds. And what's interesting is we're trying to figure out what that dividing line is between being compassionate and being enabling. And that's, that's, that's a really huge piece of the conversation because in some respects, there are people who for no choice of their own deserve our compassion because they're in a difficult situation. There are indeed other people who have made a lifestyle choice, or it's a voluntary situation, or, or for whatever reason, that it's not the responsibility of the city to support any more than it's the responsibility to support um, rich people who want to live in rich houses, where everybody should be equal. At the same time, we're saying, can we do something meaningful 
Or is anything we try to do going to be insignificant, therefore we should probably um, just throw up our hands? Nobody here is saying that, but I do agree it is insignificant unless we bring others in. And so I think the notion that we cannot do this alone is very, very meaningful for us. We want to be compassionate. We want to be meaningful without slipping over that edge into becoming enabling or insignificant. And I think it's a very thin line to tread. I think one or two more rest camps to try to deal with an immediate issue, not a long-term solution, um, may be something that we could, we could try to manage now, even as we work on bringing other partners in, finding larger resources, and working on a more permanent, structural, long-term solution. So that's, that's why I'm back to the notion of awkward compromise. That's really what this is. It's not the ideal, but it is the awkward compromise that I can live with. The second round is still open. The, the uh, original rest stop idea was the motion I made, which was a suggestion by sleep, which is we want people to be able to uh, uh, sleep between dusk and dawn, and then they clear out. So that was the original motion. That's what it was called a rest stop. And so then they didn't like the idea. That didn't go anywhere. It got morphed into what we're doing right now, which is really another opportunity village. I don't, there's little to no distinction but I would like in that in that conversation to bring back that idea, that other kind of pilot, and think about how that might work, which is uh, a place for people to sleep dust to dawn, which was the original request. Okay, I, I would think there might be phases, and maybe that's part of what we want to talk about, is what are the distinct phases in moving people from absolute homelessness into um, self-sufficiency. I can see that as a series of steps, Opportunity Village being one of the steps, and there's others along the way. You can connect those dots, you can see a path. So that would be a great uh, part of the conversation. They actually had several people actually move on from Opportunity Village. They have. They, they were actually transitioned, transitioned out already. I don't see anyone else in the queue for a third round, so I think we're ready to vote on Council Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so first, before I restate the motion, if I can just thank my colleagues for this uh, good discussion. I wholeheartedly agree that the city is not in a position to solve this problem and that we need our partners on board and we need to work together for longer term solutions. Uh, and this is really a stopgap uh, band-aid. So uh, the motion uh, as uh, revised is I move to request the city manager to allow those occupying the Broadway and Hilliard site to remain there for no more than 30 days from today to allow the manager to return to the council with a recommendation for additional rest stops or other alternatives for those currently residing there. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as adjusted signify by raising their right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. All opposed? Two, the motion carries. Uh, <coughs> What's that? Seeing no other business for the council.